Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to another edition of 10 Count. I'm C Fall, but on today's edition, I am talking to the reigning and defending NWA Women's Champion, Camille. How are you doing today? I'm good. Just woke up a little bit ago and have some coffee, so I'm feeling feeling pretty good. That's great. I've already downed a whole bunch. I dumped it on my head to get it in my pores. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. There you go. Whatever it takes. That would probably burn a little bit. Uh, (laughs) But how are you feeling? Because right now, you're closing in on almost 600 days as the NWA Women's Champion. This has got to be feeling good. Well, I I actually, sometimes I like doing these podcasts simply because you guys know the numbers way better than I do. (laughs) Like the last time I heard it was over 500 days. So I guess now I'm getting close to 600 days. That's yeah. And, um, but it, it is, it's, it's pretty incredible just because I've said on other podcasts before too, like when I first became champion, I had only had, I think, was it like three or four matches with the NWA and before that, I was Nick Aldis's insurance policy for two years. Uh, so it was a very much like, oh, Lord, am I ready for this T- type of, you know, type of situation. And then I just took the ball and ran with it. And I think, um, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I think I've been doing a, a great job as champion. So i um, very, very, very proud of myself and just blessed that I can be holding a title that has such a, a lineage that it does. I know it, it's it's sometimes when you, I think when I talk to people like you, it's like, so the rain has been going on for so long people always are wondering like who could actually now beat you because right. it, it feels like you've beaten everybody and, and that yeah. think i think that's like now it's the every time you have a match now it's even more intense because like is, is this i'm not saying you're gonna lose but like could this be the end could yeah this- no totally totally and, and- it's it's um I, I think that does make it fun and i, I obviously you know you get the people that are like, Oh, when is she going to lose? Like it's been, <laughs> this has been forever. Other people deserve it. And I'm like, well, first of all, what does deserve it mean? Like True. <laughs> if anything, I deserve it because I've been defending it for so long. <laughs> and, you know, so I just think, I just think that it's, uh, it's funny because sometimes, and that's, that's, a, I'm also in a weird position now because when I first, when I first got it, I was sort of a, a heel but then I, I won the championship and everyone was like happy for me, I guess. So it kind of turned me face. Yeah. But now I'm in a position where I've had it for so long that it's kind of turning me heel. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm in a very, so people are like, well, what are you? I'm like, honestly, I'm whatever the crowd wants me to be that day. However they're feeling, because that's just in the position that's I'm, I'm in that position right now. And yes. so it, it, it makes things a little complicated, but it also makes things fun because I think it makes it a little more like, free to during the match and stuff like if, if I want to be dirty hey I can be dirty if I feel like playing fair I can play fair and that's you know that that dynamic has sort of been like fun and interesting to play into it is a different world I guess right now because it kind of reminds me of like Roman Reigns with like the, the bloodline situation where like he's obviously the bad guy but right. when he yells out to the crowd acknowledge me everyone's like yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> so much Roman take your shirt off wait who said that that was yelling, but it, yeah, it, but it's so different. Yeah. With you, because you're right. You're like, it, they're like, Oh, when's she going to lose? Or like, I hope she never loses. Like there's always two sides yes. of the coin of a fan. And, and obviously they can be fickle as well. Yes. But how, how did you, how did you feel though? Getting that championship after being Nick all this is like, you know, like a muscle for so long because suddenly you're in the spotlight and that's gotta be, either how did you get here people are obviously going to question like why did she get this she's only had a few matches or did she deserve you brought up does she deserve this deserve yeah (laughs) and and what i guess what is deserve what one question the other part would be how did you feel getting it so early yeah so i mean i guess people did think that i deserved it because i remember we had we we obviously do tapings at nwa so like we had our pay-per-view and we had tapings and so when i came out the next day at tapings everyone was chanting like you deserve it you know and i was just like yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of in the city. I was like, do I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. But um, I, I think it was the fact that I was like an NWA homegrown talent. I had been there for two years. So to them, the people that were like true NWA fans from the beginning, they've been there in my little journey. So for them, like it was nice for them to see, but um, just like on, on a wrestling level, I was extremely nervous. I was, I mean, cause I was going from the matches I had, the few matches that I had were like, what, five minute squash matches. Mm-hmm. 
And so to go from that to realizing, okay, now I'm going to have to have championship matches every time, like put on a banger every single time. Am I ready for this? I don't know, you know? And, um, but I will say like, people ask me like, what's one of your favorite matches, blah, blah, blah. And I always say me and Layla Hirsch at, um, at Empower because that was my first title defense after I got it from Serena Deeb. And I was obviously so nervous because my first title defense and like in front of a big crowd there and they're expecting a lot. And that was kind of my moment in wrestling where like, I, rem- I remember, I think I like shot her off to a turnbuckle or something and she, she, she took a bump and I just took it in and everyone was like kind of booing and it just clicked for me in that moment. Like, you know what you're doing, you're meant to be here and you can do this. You know, like I had like that kind of click moment. So ever since then, I've just been running with it. And um, the obviously I still get nervous for every match. It's just my nature, but but it's more, but there's definitely a much more high level of confidence there. Like, you know what you're doing, you can do this. And I think that um, something that really sets me apart too is like my psychology. Mm-hmm. I understand that a lot of people now, and I, and I respect it, like they love, a million moves and a million spots and things like that. And it's, it's, I respect that in a sense, but I also respect storytelling. Yes. And, um, and that's kind of like, when I say I'm like a more of an old school wrestler, that's what I mean. Like I like to really make sure that I'm telling a story in the ring. And I think that's kind of why people do enjoy watching my matches just because whether they like my wrestling or not, they get sucked in because what's going to happen. Like they, they really enjoy the story that's being told in the ring. Yeah, I think right now your run reminds me of like when Deanna Perezzo showed up in Impact Wrestling and people were like, oh, I know who she is, sort of. And then as she plowed through everybody, went to AAA, you know, went everywhere else and suddenly everyone recognized her and now she knows who you are. I think the same thing has happened to you where people knew who you were, but now you've plowed through everybody and now everyone's like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, you, they tip their hat to you versus before being like, does she deserve this? Does she deserve this? Right. But you brought up Empower and this is a subject that either pisses people off or brings people together. And I love your opinion since you're the champion. Mm-hmm. I've interviewed Billy Corgan twice now about this. And yeah. every time we talk, we joke about how what's going to happen when he says something, people are going to be angry. And I asked him, could there be another Empower? Could there be mm-hmm. a second one? And he was, he, he, he told me, he feels like there isn't enough pay-per-view quality talent to pull off another one because before there was individuals from other companies and he had to put down the bill. It was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What do you think if NWA themselves with just the talent you have now, could you pull off a pay-per-view quality empower pay-per-view? With just the NWA talent that we have now, I do think, I do think that we could pull it off, but I think that the special thing about empower was the fact that it brought together ladies from all walks of wrestling from whether that be AEW, Impact, AAA. Uh, So that's the thing that I think that was interesting about it. I think Billy already mentioned, like he doesn't have a working relationship with AEW right now. So that would kind of be off the table, but I don't think that's a big deal. I think we could still pull it off in a great way. But the thing that I think uh, kind of gets blown out of proportion a bit is, does it have to be every year? You know what I mean? Like Mm. we didn't, we didn't say we didn't say that uh, it's never going to happen again. I think that it definitely will happen again. It's just a fact of of when. And to me, if you wait a little bit longer, it makes it even more special the next time that you have it. So to me, if you start making it like an every year type of thing, it's to be expected. And then like the specialness kind of goes away. You know, for instance, WWE they had the um, the May Young. When's the last time they had a May Young? Uh, but people aren't going crazy 20, about that. 2018 maybe would be like the last one maybe, but they had, yeah, they, so they, had they had evolution in their uh, women's pay-per-view. And I think I've, I've actually, I've talked to Raquel Gonzalez. I've, I, uh, yeah. you know, Dana Brooke, other people like that. And I asked the same question. They were kind of like, well, we did what we wanted to do. We want, we, we, we wanted to be put into the slot of we matter. We don't need a whole pay-per-view because now we matter on the shows versus before it was pillow fights. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And that's what I tell people too. all the, all the kind of uproar about empower not happening. Well, guess what? The first night of it, NWA 74 is a two night event. Right. And the first night in the chase ballroom, a historic place for wrestling, you know, Harley race, all those people have wrestled me and Ty Valkyrie were main eventing. 
but no one was talking about that because everyone was talking about, oh, power is not happening. But I was like, yeah, but you have two women that are main eventing the first night of the show. Like, I, like why aren't people talking about that? And so while I do understand, I, th- I think what people got the most upset about was the fact that Billy said there's not enough pay-per-view um, quality talent out there. And I can see why people got upset about that because these people, they watch all sorts of wrestling, like little indie shows, big indie shows, everything. So they see like their favorite wrestlers and they know, but truthfully, I just don't think that let, let's be honest here that the office or whoever's running, do they have eyes on all of that stuff? Probably not. Should they? That's not my job. That's above my pay grade. Right. So, so I think that's where people sort of had the biggest issue with it, but now that it's been more put to like the mainstream and people are talking about it more, I think it's a good thing because now they're sort of forced to be looking at all these places and, and, and new indie talent to give them a chance. So I do think that there's an ability for maybe this upcoming 2023, something big to happen. And for some of these girls that have never got an opportunity to get an opportunity. I'm very happy that I'm able to talk to you about this because every time I talk to someone, it's with a man. You know, Billy right. Corgan, Trevor Murdoch, I've talked to them both about this twice. Um, and I'm in obviously they always get the backlash because of the reaction, because I guess it's because they're a man talking about how women aren't good in the ring. Pay-per-view quality women, that is. But you right. champion of that company sharing your thoughts on this, I think is going to bring more light to it. Maybe people won't go so crazy about your reaction because you're the champion and you are a woman. So it's like, right. oh, hello, uh, maybe people will understand that it's. It's not like you can just drop down all this blank checks and hopefully because it's a business wrestling business. If Mm -hmm. Billy can't make his money back, why is he doing it? Yeah. And like, I just think that I just think that, you know, some of the stuff I've read are now people are saying like, well, Billy Corgan doesn't respect women's wrestling or, or NWA hates women's wrestling. And I work there and I don't feel that way at all yes, I'm the champion. So maybe I'm like feeling up here. Right. But I'm pretty sure I can speak for a lot of the women in the rest, uh, in the locker room. We're all very happy and it's a great locker room. And it's like, it's it's just, we're like, it's all super cool and all happy. And we're all just having a good time. And like, we all kind of, um, pride ourselves in being like, we're going to beat the boys tonight. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? And like, like we're going to have the best matches and like Pat Kinney, for instance, he'll always come back and be like, you girls are killing the boys. And I like, it's so there's that sort of like competitiveness, but it's a fun competitiveness. And I really enjoy that. And I think that I just don't like that narrative that the NWA doesn't like women's wrestling at all. Cause right. I think that me and a lot of other girls that work there, first of all, it's a platform for us to work. And we're very grateful for that. And I mean, we're all having a good time. And if you watch the NWA women's division, I'm pretty sure anybody that watches it will say like, we're killing it right now. Like it's hard hitting fun matches that make sense. And um, I just, I just wouldn't read the headlines of stuff and take that for what the headline says. If You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, I said to Billy, I go, Billy, we just talked for 20 minutes about empower. Someone's going to take two sentences that you said and plop them up top on the headline and not, listen or read or watch everything you said and like he didn't say anything bad about women's wrestling Mm -hmm. he he, but but like you just said someone's gonna just take what they want to you know get some clicks and i get it it's it's these websites have their business too they need to get their ads and clicks and all that stuff i get it i i 100 get it but the controversy surrounding women's wrestling is interesting because recently on smackdown a few weeks ago now Sarah Logan returned Mm -hmm. and Sarah Logan was, she was not there for a while. She got laid off. She came back. Now she's with the Viking Raiders and instantly, instantly Max the Impaler is trending. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Hmm, that's weird. Let's go. Oh my. You put Sarah Logan and Max side by side. They look very (laughs) similar. They look very similar now. The makeup. Yeah. I was even reading that someone discovered that Sarah Logan got her hair done from the same person that Max gets her hair done from. So it comes to the conclusion of, does Sarah Logan know what she's doing, right. borrowing or stealing, whatever you want to look at it, as yeah. Maxine Impaler's gimmick? 
Is that, do you, are you seeing the similarities here? Well, Max was in the locker room right after that happened. So obviously that was a bit of a topic of conversation, but I even said, I'm very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's just say slow. I'm very slow to, to think that someone would outright steal a gimmick from somewhere, someone else. I think that people get inspiration maybe from other people, but at the end of the day, they do say that um, imitation is the, the highest form of flattery or whatever the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the that, that cliche quote is. Um, but although it can be flattering, like, oh, you like my look, you like that. It's, it's unfortunate in a sense that once things are done on the main roster of WWE, they're now the WWE's, right? It's now their thing because they are the highest of high and like that's what everyone watches so it's it's kind of hard when you're trying to make a name for yourself or get like your gimmick over and you're not yet on that main because the thing is too like even with names for instance or nicknames or monikers yeah. people are will people will be like well, why don't you trademark it well not everyone has the the means or resources when you know what i'm saying when they're on a certain level to be able to do that type of stuff and it's, it can be unfortunate. Uh, do I think that she outright like stole Max's look? No, I cannot say that. You know what I mean? Um, but as an independent talent, it can definitely be a bit frustrating uh, to see someone kind of do your thing. Um, so I don't know. That's really all I have to say about that. It, it, I don't think that she stole her thing on purpose. I just think that it's a bit unfortunate that it's so similar, but 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 the the light in all of this is it did get max trending and so now a lot of, a lot more people that maybe didn't know about max now know about max so if you can look at a positive there then that's a, possibly a positive yeah yeah, yeah. i i because i was i looked into it deeper because i went in further and i was people were showing like video games in 2017 of this viking video game and then 2018 max has the look Obviously, we're in 2022 now, so Sarah right. Logan has this look. So people are just like, oh, did Max get inspired by this? Is Max from, you know, uh, Logan's run? Is Sarah Logan just a Viking? Like, similar looks, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. That'd be like saying all luchadors who wear masks are Rey Mysterio, you know, that, <laughs> and, and, or Mil Mascaris, because, like, obviously, Rey Mysterio was the first person to wear a mask. Right, And neither right, right. was Mil Mascaris or, or things like that. Um. The, you know, Undertaker with his, with a very dark, mysterious gimmick. I mean, what? So anyone who ever has a dark, mysterious gimmick after him is a ripoff of the Undertaker. Like that's that's where I think comparisons start coming into. But you know, I'm not here to judge. All I know is I thought that was interesting that Max was trending instantly, and I'm like, oh, this this does not look good. Yeah. <laughs> this, this does not look good. I, like I interviewed Natalia Markova and. She at the time, or still does use it, a uh, badass with a great ass. Carmella mm -hmm. one day on Rob starts calling herself that, and instantly Markova starts trending. And you're like, is there a pattern, or right. or am I just is this just so common that like eventually you will stumble upon same things because you're all wrestlers, you're all kind of thinking the same way. But hey, I mean, there's lines like if someone came out with like similar gear as me, I'd be like, okay, well it's gear. You, there's only but so much gear that can be made. But if all of a sudden someone started using like the brick house moniker, then I'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's when I would have a little bit of a problem with it. And it, I, I think too, it like it, it's because wrestling, although it's, there's lots of people in it, it's still a very small world. So mm -hmm. someone knows someone that knows someone that knows what you're doing and has, has heard of you, you know? That's so cool. that's where it's just like, people can't really get away with saying these days, like, especially with social media that, Oh, I didn't know that. Or I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Right. It's not like the Andre the giant days where he goes right. from town to town. And there's also Haystack Calhoun. And there's also big John stud, you know, there's right. big men pretending to be that person or a version of that person in each town. This is completely different. We have social media, we have YouTube, we have everything in a uh, cell phone on, uh, you know, it's with the camera. Boop. Exactly. Though, how do you think NWA can grow? Because I know January 31st is going to be a live event, a, mm -hmm. a, a huge live event. And 
I'm excited for that. I interviewed, I interviewed Matt Cardona a few weeks ago, and I was like, you know, this is a huge thing. And he was like, I, I want more live events. I want more live shows like this because he's like, yeah. we're ta- where you're doing blocks of tapings. So he he's taping something in April, then it airs in October. And suddenly he's like, I don't remember even doing that. But NW, yeah. but he told me NWA office is very good about sending graphics and sending in what you should say about what just mm-hmm. happened. So do you think NWA going live is a better opportunity to grow your audience versus doing power tapings? Uh, I definitely think that going live is a great way to get, you know, some new eyes on the product just because you got to think not – not everyone is a hardcore fan that is going to watch power, whether it be on fight on Tuesdays or YouTube on Fridays, they're just not going to, but people on a Friday, Saturday night or whatever, don't have anything to do. And they kind of just enjoy wrestling a little bit and see that there's live wrestling in their town. They're going to go check it out. Mm. So I think that it's a great way to get some fans that maybe they don't even know what's happening with, you know, our show, at least they'll come and check out a show, a live show. And I'm sure you know this. Even people that aren't wrestling fans, when they go to a live show, have a great time. Always. Right? Always. And uh, so that can be a way for like, okay, they have a great time. And now they start actually watching the product that's on Fight or YouTube. Uh, so I think that is live events. I'm really excited for this upcoming year. I think we're going to be doing more live events. And um, it's going to be a great way to get, get some new fans to check it out. And just, I think something else that can help us grow is just getting you know, that consistent, like storyline, good storylines going on, because I think that's something that um, NWA really set us apart uh, when we first started, especially for the world's heavyweight title. You know, we had the 10 pounds of gold series and everything like that. And so everyone was following, even if they didn't know what was going to be on the card for the whole show, they knew what that main event was going to be. And so they wanted to come and check that out. So I think if we kind of get back to like really getting a good story going into like the main title storylines, that would be a good way for us to grow as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, speaking of NWA, though, Mr. NWA, I feel like Nick Aldis no longer with the company, according mm-hmm. to what I read online. Now, storyline or not storyline or real mm-hmm. or not real, Nick Aldis is out of NWA. And for so mm-hmm. long, he, in my opinion, was he was the face of NWA. You worked with him for so long in NWA. Mm-hmm. How does it make you feel seeing – him leave you know you don't have to tell me if you know why or why he didn't leave right right but but as a person who worked close with him this must be a little different because the locker room now know nick aldis yeah uh i'm this is gonna sound like i'm like the coldest person ever but i don't really get like attached to people like like that or things even though i did work with nick for two years and underneath him and like he's our family he's my husband's best friend so he's a family friend of ours and like on just a friendship level we we love nick but on a business level that's none of my business and that's you know what i'm saying so like i to me all i've gotten from it is that he doesn't really agree with the direction the nwa is going in right now and that's okay like that's his thoughts and so he wants to try something new and you know i wish him the best of luck in trying new stuff and kind of the free agency world because it can be a scary place so he's he's um he's betting on himself and gonna see what happens and that's you know that's that i i i find it to be a bit um sad that you know him and billy kind of the way i feel like i feel like i'm talking about a relationship like a boyfriend girlfriend lady the way things ended um but sometimes in the heat of the moment people feel a certain way and they just let it out and that's what happens and especially like we said with social media it's right there if you're feeling a certain way you can just put it out right then and um things happen but I think like as far as the locker room goes I'm not in the men's locker room Mm -hmm. but um I I feel like everything will be just fine I, I it's you can't base your whole company around one person right yeah so uh i think if someone left and like then the whole locker room just fell apart like oh my gosh like, you know i just that's not a thing that happens maybe to people on the outside watching they feel that way because for them nick was the face 
but just as far as like the locker room goes that's not what happens like if someone leaves it's just you you got to keep working like it's your job so yeah. you just I don't know it's another day of the office you know it's just someone's gone and now you just keep working yeah, it was just shocking to me. It reminded me of like when Cody Rhodes left AEW. It's like, what? Is that really, yeah, that's right. really happening? Like this Something is- that he helped build, right? Yes. Yeah. And I feel yes. like, you know, NWA obviously wasn't built by Nick Aldis. <clears throat> it was built by many different people from many different generations. But seeing him leave, I was just like, what? what? But yet <clears throat> here we are still standing and, uh, you know, yeah. keep on trucking, keep on pay-per-views, keep on live and events. But with, with, Oh, money being an issue, mm-hmm. who would you like to take on in other organizations? I know because a lot of people always want to talk about, you know, Sasha Banks. No one knows where she's going, things like that. But like, who would you like to step in? Because the forbidden door seems to be open sometimes and sometimes it's closed shut. But who would you like to see walk through that forbidden door, come to NWA? You could have one match with them. Okay, so I have to pick one, right? You can pick as many as you want. Okay. Oh, I have a few, and like they're all big girl matches because that's just, I feel like people like seeing a bit of a hoss fight, even if it's with women and someone that could like, you know, formidable challenger. So I think like money wise and like what would really put ass in seats would be like Rhea Ripley, oh, yeah. um, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair. You know, that I feel like any of those sorts of matches is just just like athletes, like big badass women taking each other on. I think that would be great. And like me and Jay, there's a story there because we were both, you know, collegiate athletes that kind of got into wrestling and we have that similar story. And then Rhea, she's just super over. So I mean, maybe I can get the rub there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I live in Boston though, and I yelled at Billy. I even wrote I even wrote my piece of paper. Come on, Billy. NWA, pay-per-views, Boston. What's up with that? Why can't we get one? Hey, I'm with you because my best friend who was a bridesmaid, at, she works in Boston. She does medical stuff. And she has left comments on NWA's post before and said, what's going on? We need stuff in Boston because she really wants to come. So simply for my friend Jenna, Jenna's for you. We need to go to Boston. So I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm there. You know, we need to make it up there. Yeah, and like there's plenty of arenas that can easily be filled with NWA. You know, uh, the low auditorium in my brain just pops out. That's where uh, Shawn Michaels lost his smile. Oh, <laughs> I was I was there actually as a kid, which is hilarious. But uh, that would be a great place for NWA to have, and I think that that's what we need in life. But I'm just so happy to sit here and talk with you today about everything NWA because again. We're closing it. We'll just keep adding numbers. We're closing it on, on 10,000 days yeah, as yeah, right. NWA Women's Champion. As I talk to you. As I, as I, I would believe you. you. I'd be like, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're closer to 550 than 600, but I think 600 <laughs> sounds better in my book. So we're going we're gonna to go, go with it. it yeah. We're closing it on 600 days as champion. Let's continue that run. Uh, again, you're plowing through everybody. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here on Tank Count because you are the current reigning and defending NWA Champion. I've been Steve Fall. And we had a great time talking. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.